Norman Baker was a charlatan and a notorious cancer quack. That's who Norman Baker was. He was, he was very friendly to me and my family. I feel like Norman Baker was a very intelligent man. And uh, this man uh, thought he could cure cancer. He was uh, for sure a great marketing person. He wanted to pe bring people in and absorb them with him. He was um, way beyond his time. And uh, his whole family uh, thought that he was a little bit loony. He was against big business, against big medicine, against big government. And, but he was always out there pushing for something. Um, you can't dispute the fact that he gave a lot of people hope. He loved life, but nobody's going to tell him what to do. So I knew all about Norman Baker, good and bad. Yeah, my name is Max Churchill. I'm representing Norman Baker, the cancer quack. Uh, about that time he came up uh, with a cure for it, either injection or taken internally. It was carbolic acid, glycerin with a touch of peppermint. Every person that came in had a sheet written up, cancer, cancer, cancer. And uh, some of them went home and they were cured. But the doctors at the university hospitals at that time said, they found out that it wasn't cancer in that first place, it was something else that was curable. Well, when he actually took this man's, the top of his head off to show that he had been cured, there's a lot of O's and ah's and from the whole crowd. There was a big crowd there. I do remember going out with my father and mother to Weed Park, he took the top of the guy's head off, removed this cancer, and supposedly sewed him up, which I don't know, I think it was a big farce. And he unwrapped that top of that head, and he took off the top bone up there, and that's where you can also see the, the brains in there, or the top of the head, the cranium. And several women passed out up there, and they had to have the ambulance and take those women out of there. So it was a very true story. I did, I did visit the hospital. To me, it looked like a real hospital. And we did have real doctors that, that were there. They just weren't people that put on a, a uniform of some kind and pretended to be a doctor. They were, they were doctors. And there were some good things that came out of that, that hospital. I am a cancer survivor. My wife is also a cancer survivor. Fortunately, we were able to go to real doctors, not to Baker. And in, in 1931, they came in here with the car loads and the bus loads. And they had to build another hospital, two of them there. And uh, this got quite exciting for him because he couldn't keep up with the patients coming in. And downtown, uh, they were relishing at that time. That was a depression. But boy, things were hopping in here for all the stores selling. What do you feel are some of Baker's positive contributions to our community? I've never heard of any positive contributions. But you know you would walk down 2nd Street and you would see somebody bandaged up and the, um, I remember my mother and my father both said I do not want you drinking out of a drinking fountain in Muscatine anymore and I said why not? He said because the people that have cancer, they also needed a drink maybe, and they went there. So I'm just asking you not to use the drinking fountain in Muscatine. My grandmother was treated by him uh, for breast cancer, and she could come home a couple of weekends. The way I heard my dad speak of, of it was that um, he robbed their, them of their hope as well as their money. He took everything that the people that came to him, not just my grandmother, but the people that came to him paid money thinking they were going to be cured. They were looking for hope. Um, and there, in those times, uh, 
in her case, it just wasn't a hopeful outcome. Uh, the families were not happy with him, so they would go and spit on his grave. And so for a long time, they kept the location of his grave um, secret. This guy in Quad Cities found out that somebody put a purple flower on his grave every, every Memorial Day. And he says, I don't know who would do the, a trick like that. Well, I know who the person was, me. Um, I didn't go to the funeral. I just went to the funeral home out of curiosity, actually. I wanted to see, if, I wanted to see that diamond stick pin that he always wore on his tie, and it was not there. <laughs> Um, no one really knows what they did with the bodies. There's, there's all kinds of theories out there that they're buried out by Lutheran homes, that they're buried, uh, so, that they put them in the river, that they were buried underneath the institute. There's all kinds of stories about where he put the bodies. When people died, they were carted away in the middle of the night and the deaths were not recorded with the county recorder. There were no death certificates. They were just taken away. You know, and you say, well, a lot of people died in this hospital. Okay, but these are the folks that were desperate. These are the folks that came from a long ways away that saw no help around them. And so they were, you know, they were the ones that were probably the very, very high risk folks that he treated. You know, the ones that nobody else would take because nobody else wanted to have a loss on their record, right? But Norman took them anyway. If someone all of a sudden came up with a cure for cancer, um, it would be great for the American public, but it wouldn't be so good for the pharmaceutical companies and the, medic and the medical profession. You know, the money's not in prevention. It's not even in the cure. Today's is all about prescribing you to hide the symptoms and keep you coming back for that $50 a week prescription. You know, that's where the money, that seems to me where the money is now. They don't really cure it. They just treat the symptoms, make you feel a little bit better, and you keep buying that pill until you die, yeah. you know. With technology the way it is, uh, because we live in a in a, um, a society that's based on free enterprise and is market driven, uh, dollars are involved. And when you get dollars involved with people and with healthcare, it gets kind of jumbled up. Studies have shown that the placebo effect does help some people. Some people are able to think themselves and heal themselves well. There, there is some proof that the power of the mind is a valid source of healing. And if he w inflicted people with a positive attitude, the body's immune system can do wonders toward fighting infections or diseases inside the body. So was he all wrong? You know, you see people with diseases and they get depressed and they think, oh, well, I'm not going to take my medication today, I'm not going to eat right, I'm not going to do this. Uh, or that, and because they're in a negative mental state, uh, they continue to have medical problems and, you know, uh, ultimately could be fatal to them. If you have negative thoughts, if you're just negative all the time and you're thinking that your body starts to create chemicals in around the cell to basically house it so it's not doing its full potential, all of a sudden you start thinking positive, the cells are able to do what it wants to do. That's how powerful our body is, and we just need to tap into it and stay positive. <laughs> the alternative treatment is okay if you want to try it, because it probably has a positive psychological boost to you. Um, you know, you, it gives you hope. It uh, you know you have one you have one more thing to try before you give up totally, um, but. You don't want it to harm you. You don't want it to shorten your life. You don't want it to have a negative effect on any other treatment you're getting. We should be proud of what Norman Baker did in Muscatine. Some people thought this was all baloney, you know, and that, that was their opinion. But when it came right down, Norman Baker did a lot for Muscatine. But I do think that some people walked away and thought, Norman was his institute and Dr. Hoxley um, were miracle workers and other people walked away, especially like my dad and his sisters, um, feeling uh, 
a resentment for what he had put my grandmother through. But giving hope is, uh, giving hope is what it's all about. Because you never know what that positive attitude, that hope is going to bring you. He gave people false hope. Through his radio broadcast, he brought uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of people here thinking that he could cure cancer. Uh, he did not cure cancer. Um, some people would say it's cruel to give false hope. And some people back then would say, you know, what's the harm in giving them some hope and the will to live and letting them enjoy what time they have left on a good note instead of going home and laying in a deathbed. If the guy would have stayed out of medicine, <laughs> he probably would have been a hero in Muscatine, but he didn't. And him pop stirring, him challenging what people were thinking at that time, I think created a lot of not only controversy, but doubt and maybe challenge in other people's mind, maybe there is a better way. And so I, I think Norman and others have pushed more uh, government regulation. I think uh, obviously with the FDA's involvement and, and all the medications we take, um, and I think it's pushed the research uh, scientific community uh, to um, do more study. Cancer today is curable. There are um, you know, look how far we've come with breast cancer, with uh, a lot of uh, colon cancer and so forth and so on. Uh, if, if we can detect it uh, soon enough, we can cure it. It was proven to be a, a fraud. He was a cancer quack and that's, that's it. I think the whole series is misnamed. It's called Man in Purple. The, the series should be titled looking for a cancer quack last seen driving a purple car. <laughs> That'd be a better title. That might be it. It's kind of long. <laughs>